step back in time to 1965, where craftsmanship met innovation. This lens, a remarkable 60 years old artifact, is a living piece of photographic history. As a precursor to the famed Canon FD series that would soon follow, this version offers a distinctive character with reduced contrast while preserving their sharpness, aesthetics and weight of its successor. All this at just a fraction of the cost. While not every single vintage lens stands the test of time, this one is undeniably a masterpiece, a true piece of art. I would lie to you if I say that no vintage lenses has its own characteristic look and personal story. And when we going through vintage lenses, the only thing that we look for is something unique. You don't look for perfection, you don't look for no scratches, you don't look for perfect vintage lens. In fact, I look for the total opposite. I always look for the most scratched up, the most beaten up lens because I feel like this just add more to the actual look of the lens and to the actual personality of what you can get out of this one specific lens. I recently traveled to Bangkok where there is one of my favorite places in the world. It's a weekly warehouse sale with containers of vintage lenses, cameras and anything related to that coming straight from Japan and this is insane. And the prices vary from 90% off everything to $20 for one piece to even $1 per kilo. It really depends what day you go there and what sale they have on. And after going through a lot of cameras, lenses and dust, specifically dust actually, you end up picking some pieces and uh, you live with it. And one of them was this beautiful Canon FL 135 millimeter F 2.5. This thing is absolutely incredible. Manufactured over 60 years ago, this lens that's all scratched up, it's now definitely into my vintage lens arsenal that goes straight into my camera bag all the time whenever I'm shooting only with vintage lenses. It is a unique, unique piece. It's got some very unique characteristic and look. But what excites me is that, unfortunately, I wasn't able to find the FD version, which was manufactured about five to 10 years after this one. And the only difference is that the coating on the FD was the same used in the Canon K35, which are some of the most famous cine lenses ever and they were used in some crazy Hollywood movies but apart from the coating this is pretty much the same thing just uh, yeah different coating but if you ask me to be honest it looks pretty damn good now you might ask why 135 millimeter is so important and well I wasn't actually sure about it, but I saw the old cine lens sets always have 135 millimeter included. And after a bit of research, I actually found out that it is super common to use 135 millimeter for a portrait because it is one of the only focal lengths that doesn't really distort human faces. And it's not that far that you can't really use it for anything else. So you get these beautiful portrait shots, but you also get the ability of compress everything into your shot and even if you want to shoot something wider with a subject little in the middle, you're going to have such a cool perspective because of the compression of the 135 millimeter, which I'm actually finding out right now as we're speaking. I've only, I've only had this for about two weeks now. And using this lens has been pretty, pretty incredible. I'm not going to lie, pretty incredible. Being such a long focal length, it obviously adds a bit of jitter with your image, especially if you're like me, you like to travel, you like to shoot run and gun, you're mostly handhelding all the time. The thing is, it's not that easy to handheld with this thing and it takes a lot of practice, but I've covered this in a different video and Sony has stabilization for different focal lengths when you use manual lenses and probably other cameras too, but I use Sony. so. This is what I know about. So as long as you put this lens on and you put your stabilization to 135, it's not that hard to handheld shooting. In fact, every single shot that I put as an example in this video, I shot handheld. 
So as long as you get used to it, you don't move too much. And if you do move, you enhance the movement, you'll be fine. Let's be honest, not many of us actually need a 135 millimeter prime lens in our camera bag, especially when it weights as much as this, which I haven't weighted yet. So I'm gonna just put it here. Especially with all this weight, if you have to carry a whole prime set in your camera bag, everywhere you go, if you travel or whatever, it gets very heavy. And most of us just carry a 24 to 70 and a 100 to 400, for example, and you're covered for everything. You don't need anything else. Two lenses, two zoom lenses, done. Why would I care about vintage lenses? And the thing is simple. I explained this before, but I love personally vintage and cine lenses because you can add such an interesting layer on top of everyone else. If you're the only one in your town, for example, shooting with vintage lenses, you're creating something very unique that no one else can replicate. So no one else can just pick up a camera and create the same thing and it's not gonna look the same. And even if they do, they probably pick a different vintage lens with a totally different crushed up or totally different chromatic aberration on it. It's just so hard to replicate and this is why I love vintage lenses because it's so unique. That's probably a word I was looking for, unique. In the world of social media where it's so easy to get inspiration, copy and replicate what everyone else is doing, using such kind of gear can really make you different and help you develop your own style. So yeah, do I think this is a great investment? I don't know, you can probably find this lens on eBay for like $100 maybe, $100. $150, something like that. You can probably go to like a secondhand vintage market somewhere and you, you might be able to find it for a few dollars. The thing is, lenses age very well. A lens that is made 60 years ago has, has not fungus, has only a few scratches, and it produces an amazing quality. So you don't really need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to buy the new lens, the new technology. You don't need that. You just need a bit of creativity and just make use of what you have. That's all. If you do like this video, leave a like and subscribe. I make videos every week about cinematography, filmmaking, vintage lenses, DaVinci Resolve. So yeah, stick around for more and see you there.